In this video, we're going to apply the techniques we've seen of a clean solder tip, the right temperature, liberal use of solder flux, and apply these techniques to soldering some pins into a circuit board. And we'll see a little trick to align the pins into the holes on the circuit board. Again, how important it is to use a lot of solder flux. And then I'm going to show you another trick where we tack two of the leads by soldering those leads and that holds the part in place in the circuit board and then we can at our leisure go along and solder the other pins in place. And again, if I hadn't mentioned before, liberal use of solder flux. And you're going to see that if you have solder flux on the pins, if you have a clean tip, if you have the right temperature, then all you have to do is let the solder do the work. If you just touch some of that molten solder to the combination of the pins and the pads and heat it up, the solder will wick into the gap between the pin and the hole that it's sitting in, and you'll get a clean solder joint effortlessly done every time. And that's what I'm going to show you here. In this example, we're going to solder the leads into a little circuit board. This happens to be a really great uh, little 16-bit uh, ADD. It comes as a module with um, just the bare board itself and the holes with a lead frame. And we want to attach that lead frame to the little module. Ultimately, we want to end up with something that looks like this. But in particular, we would really like to have it so that the pins come out kind of at a 90 degree angle there. So when this gets plugged into a solderless breadboard, for example, uh, that the board kind of sticks up uh, vertically uh, really well. So that's going to be our goal. We want to solder those pins in there. And we want to make a good solder joint. We don't want to have shorts. Here's how we do it. Really simple. Here's the trick. We're actually going to use a solderless breadboard uh, in order to align the pins for us. We're going to stick the pins in there, and then we're going to stick the circuit board on there. And then we're going to apply the magic flux that will help to dissolve the tin oxide from the tip of the soldering iron. And then when we apply solder, uh, a little solder to those leads sticking through the holes, the uh, solder will uh, flow onto those pins all by itself. And again, we're using lead-free solder here. It's not as easy to use as leaded solder, but we're going to find that if you can do the same exact techniques we're going to use for leaded, apply to lead-free. Uh, and if you can do lead-free soldering, the leaded solder is going to be like falling off a log. So let's get started. The first step is we're going to take our header pins and we're just going to stick them into the solderless breadboard. That aligns them vertically. Next step, we're going to take our circuit board and we're just going to stick it in. And we're going to put those pins aligned how we want. And of course, the long legs go into the board and the short legs are what sticks out um, into the, the um, circuit board. So now they're aligned. The problem, of course, is that, and it's a little hard to see here maybe, but gee, you know, that board's not at 90 degrees. You know, I need to offset it a little bit. And so you just want to put something underneath it to hold it up in place. And I'm just literally using another uh, set of header pins here. So now it's holding it in place at a pretty good right angle. The secret in assembling components that have more than one lead on them is you want to set one or two of the leads we call it tacking it down. You want to make sure they're soldered in place and that will hold the rest of the part. And so at your leisure, you can come along and solder all the other leads. The very first step after we've got that in place is make sure your soldering iron is at temperature. We're going to apply a little bit of solder flux. And so let's take a look at the solder flux. This particular solder flux, this solder flux is some um, uh, liquid solder flux. It's water soluble. You can read the details really easy to use. You pull off the tip and there's a reservoir of solder inside here. If you hold it up to your and shake it, you should be able to hear that solder flux uh, bounce around on the inside. If you don't hear liquid sound on the inside, toss it, uh, it's empty. The tip itself, um, and it's very spongy, and it's also pretty hard. If it's not wet with solder flux, and you can see we're getting a little bit of dampness on the, on the board, push in, and when you push it in, uh oh, wow, that was a lot. Um, it makes contact with the reservoir and then it just squirts out. We want to make sure that tip is very damp with solder flux because that's what we're going to coat on the leads. So we come over here to our leads and I don't need any extra solder flux. And now let's just 
touch the tip to the lead and if you look closely hey we're we're making it pretty darn wet that solder flux is uh, wicking between the pin and uh, the board that's exactly what we want the more solder flux the better you can never have too much solder flux now we're ready to do a little bit of soldering so we're going to take a little bit of our lead free solder we've got our tip at 600 degrees it's been sitting around oxidizing I cleaned the tip in the brass sponge that tip is you know pretty pretty shiny we're gonna add a little bit of solder to the tip so we've got some solder there now we're literally just going to touch the tip to the pin and the pad and look as it got hot did you see that the solder just flowed around the pad that tin oxide was removed by the solder flux and once you have the tin oxide removed the tin and the pads and the pin naturally wanted to the solder naturally wanted to stick to it and it just wicked itself around that is the secret to a good solder joint let the solder do the work after you remove the tin oxide so we've got one of the pins done on the end let's do the one on the other end and again I'll show you what happens with no solder flux here and so we put a little solder on the tip we touch it to the pad and uh oh nothing just cannot get it to stick that's how you make bad solder joints so we're gonna come around add some solder flux remember you can't have too much solder flux so now this solder flux I'm going to grab some from our reservoir here that solder flux is now going to dissolve the tin oxide when it gets hot so we come along with our tip let's see we got it got to get it cleaned off a little bit we add a little solder to it we make contact with the tip Wow the solder did all the work it just reflowed that is the secret to making a good solder joint we want to have the right temperature tip a clean tip solder flux on the parts and let the solder do the work and now we've tacked the two ends we've tacked the two ends of the uh, module we've got pins on the two ends soldered in look we get a nice 90 degree uh, connection there and now we can literally go around to each pin and what do we have to do on each pin we have to add the um, solder flux and so we can take it from our reservoir take it from the the pin here and we're just going to add solder flux to the pins now the solder flux evaporates when it gets hot and so if we put solder flux everywhere and we go around and again we're going to do the same trick We're going to add solder to the soldering iron. We're going to touch the tip. And look, that solder has reflowed all by itself. That's what we want to have happen. But while we've done that, the solder flux that we added to the spin has probably evaporated away. And so, again, what's the golden rule? You can never have too much solder flux. So we're going to add a little bit of solder flux. And if you do it quickly, one after the other, let's try it again. A little solder on the soldering iron touch to the pad the solder just flows around naturally if we do it quickly we may be able to cycle through uh, all of these all at once let's see if we can do that um, and I'm just gonna again add solder flux to each of these guys make sure they're well wet and if you get to the point where okay don't have enough solder flux coming out you can push down again and you can wet the the surface a little bit generally I find 99 percent of the time when you can't make a good solder joint is because you don't have solder flux that's going to dissolve that tin oxide so let's see if we can just go around and zip through so another thing to watch out for is some soldering irons they have a timer and if you wait uh, more than about 10 minutes the temperature of the soldering iron drops and you can't make a good solder joint and here was a case where I couldn't melt the solder on the tip and so usually all you have to do is uh, push one of the buttons on the soldering iron and that will automatically raise the temperature back to the set point so let's try it again
Up oh, there we go. A little bit of solder. Let the solder flux do the work. Just adding a little bit of solder to the tip, heating up the pad and the tip and the solder. Heat up the pad and the tip, the solder, and the solder flux does all the work. And we're done. Let's take a look and see what we've done. So you can see, you know, it's not bad. We have good coverage of the solder, and, and it's a little hard to see under these conditions the um, interface between the pad and the pin, but you can see it's a smooth, wetted surface. Looks like we've got good contact. Most important thing, we don't have any shorts. We don't want to use too much solder. It's that delicate balance, but we have enough to make really good contact between the pin and the pads. And now our part is well soldered. We can work it out of the solderless breadboard. And here we are. Nice right angle, good solder joints. We're ready to tackle the next one. And when you get into a, a flow of these, it'll take all of about 30 seconds to do all the solder joints. And now you can try it.